Uh, we did see hmm. some tiny mid a couple days ago. Can be quite effective. That it is. Um, it's a, it's a issue of timing. So the tiny does enable you to play fast. You look to Neon to use that early burst damage to its full potential. The one worry is the Dazzle. Shallow Grave will ruin that combo. And, of course, the Snowball save from Tusk. So those are the two issues you have to watch out for with this bursting tiny. But beyond that, some really good targets to pin down. It takes care of an Enchantress without worrying about the attack speed slow. So you have value in that pick there as well. Uh, the last thing really is just a, something to tie it up for Neon with her last pick. Execration does preemptively ban the PL. So you're not going to see that. I think in this case, you might maybe consider a Slark. The lockdown for Execration is not the best. Slark can most certainly play around that. You worry about the AoE damage from the Ember, but that's something that you can kind of mitigate. One final pickup now, Neon. Safe lane core is still missing. They won't have the Void nor the PL. Ursa is still there for both teams. The Ursa route could be the route to go. I'm sure Execration probably will actually just go down that route if it, if it isn't picked up by Neon. Five seconds remaining. Jesus, a lot of uh, popular pause ones that have just been removed from the game. Yeah. I'm, I'm a bit surprised Neon take out the Void themselves. I think with the Phoenix Egg, again, that's such a strong combo that we've seen teams dip into still. Ooh, they take the Weaver out. And that's another slippery one. You don't have the control for it so far from Execration. So I like the pick here. It's got a lot of ways of just being disruptive. And Execration, well, they've got to pick something up to punish this, but there's not really much room left and more than likely to pause one here. Ten seconds remaining. Right. See what it is. Five Probably will just be the Ursa, right? Like, deal with the Phoenix Egg. Once you get Abyssal up, the Weave is not that big of a deal. Don't mind the Tiny because you have Enrage. Can go the Ricky as well, but I I don't think it's quite as good nah, in this uh in think, this game. No, nah, I think the Ursa would be more value. I agree with you on that. It's just you're really thinking hard. Yep. About that pick. That's, they've, I mean, got, you've got, they've got plenty of time to make this decision. Yeah. I don't know. It's like Ursa in this game with a dazzle just means you're gonna be standing there with enrage, with shallow grave. It's really hard to deal with. It would be value. Hmm. Maybe. No, nah, surely not a Medusa. I mean, it could be. I don't think be. you'd want to deal with that. Could be, but hmm, it, it feels like it, they're just kind of making it harder for themselves. I think the Weaver can burn right through you, especially we, if you go Diffusal. Well, we've seen that. We, we did see that a yeah. couple of days ago as well. It's just... Uh... It's not really that big of a problem. Oh. Oh. Mm, um, mm. Yeah. Okay. Th this guy. Again, I I guess that's fine. I'm not a big fan. But in this case, it kind of makes sense. Clears out the Phoenix. Clears out the Beastmaster army. It has fairly decent timing. Doesn't take too much farm to really get the early fights going. It's, it's an alright pick. It's faded out of Meta for a reason, but I guess in this kind of draft, it does make sense. I am more confident in Neon's draft, though. I think they've got the answers to these heroes, and they only really need to worry about Yaha's Tusk for the most part. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting game, Execration. We'll see how much Palace can get done in this Gyrocopter. It was remaining. probably the last hero that I assumed would be picked up this game. Five seconds remaining. See how it works out. There is so much burst potential, though, on this gyro. Like, you've got this tiny, you've got this weaver and beastmaster. Like, if he, mm. if he takes the raw, it's going to be really easy to kill him off. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be straightforward, and it does take a while for the dazzle to invest in the shallow grave. Right. So you're not going to see that option early. Again, the key thing, I think, for Neon is to play really fast. Don't allow BHM to farm. Don't allow Palos to farm. 
These are the two win conditions for Execration to sustain Dazzle Brings and the damage of a Gyro Copper as you go late is still great. So look to Neon to try to play fast. They've got the heroes for it. We've seen Yopage again play a fantastic mid. Up against the Ember Spirit, it should be a bit better for Ben-Hur now. The matchup's not as one-sided as, say, the Queen of Pain earlier. So there's more options here for Execration. I think the biggest thing for Neon is tempo from Yopaj has to Yopaj has to kind of kick in fast. You look to that tiny to either go for a blink or the shadow blade for really fast burst initiation. Well, game two is underway. We do, of course, have our standard pause. Uh, not sure who it is this time, but I, I think it might be. Uh, no, it's Neon Esports. I was going to say Execration because they're the ones who have been having a lot of issues. But Neon Esports having some issues too. What? They're not. They're not showing off, Yapaj. Yeah. Well, what is exactly? it? Exactly. What no, happened? No, Yapaj was saying. Yapaj was saying that they're being a bit cocky, and then Yaha was like. What's so cocky about that? And then they just go. It's like, <laughs> I don't think there was anything. What? Yaha. You want to fly? <laughs> well, Walrus punch no. for you? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. Yaha is going to be aiming for him. <laughs> uh. I, I didn't get the impression that Execration was showing off last game. I'll tell you that. No, definitely not. No. <laughs> I think uh, they might they might have been a uh, I don't know but yeah it's a uh, last game was a bit rough. I can tell you're trying to read and talk at the same time. It's just kind of embarrassing, John. How can you not read this fast enough? No, he, I'm just trying to get the context of it. I don't have the context. Palace is saying like he's not replying because he might be caught, and your pa just like. Well, you're turning this against me, but I have no context for what you're saying. Still play hard. Yeah, he's getting stunned Spot up. Trouble. Raging Potato going to be there to help with Januel. Now RR might have to be uh, a little bit careful. He's taking a lot of damage. Access Ooh. to fly out as well. And we'll leave it. Ultimately, the Enchantress takes more damage than Playhard does on the Rubik. And we'll get into the laning stage. Of course, Raging Potato doesn't bother going the ball build again, purely because you can yeah. flat cannon the balls down, so you just ignore that altogether. Yeah, it's the flat cannon, it's the Enchantress. So he just goes back to this build, and we saw him do it successfully before. I don't think you expect that to change. He's still going to have a good time into the Soul Ring, and once the spam is out, it becomes pretty hard to trade against this guy. I mean, even at level uh, level one, he has six armor as well. So that magic damage from the axes does really start to pay off for aging. Even if you didn't have the enchantress there, just makes enough sense. Yeah, it's gonna be tricky for Palos. Gonna have to try to work his way to level three or four and work into those two rate bands to really sustain his lane for himself. Yeah, absolutely. So that mid lane, you'll see your page there. He's gonna be up against Ben Hur. So it's hard to know who this does favor. I mean, oh, Ooh. oh, the top lane. Skem does get yeah, Yaha, was... but goes down to BHM. That was pretty tight. They were just kind of trading in the open. This is when the Weaver is weak, though, right? Like you've got a massive cooldown on Shikuchi. You don't do the most damage. This is when Execration needs to apply that early pressure. Yeah, that they do. We'll see if they can sustain themselves now. Like, you do need a few levels up on Skem if you're going to be aggressive. That Sakuchi cooldown is just, yeah, it's so long at level 1, 12 seconds. BHM with the Poison Touch can be very, very scary as well. And as I look away, Palos down the bot lane does end up going does end up getting play hard, and Raging Potato does get RR. So both heroes finding a, a support each. Nice even trade for each other. They'll just get back yeah. to business. It's a better start for Execration. I think the fact that they're finding trades is most certainly a change from game one. You do start to wonder if Palace drops low. Probably doesn't want to exchange that way. But he has some time. 
it's going to take until the Soul Ring for Raging Potato to really spam that out. And before then, well, he's going to be limited in his uh, damage with the Axis. He's just going to play a bit more conservative. Yeah. Mid lane Yapage versus Ben Hur. It was initially favoring the Tiny, but now it is kind of just evened out. And neither one's really able to go on each other yet. Yapar's just kind of going for the 1-1-1 one, one, one build, which is pretty standard on these mid-tinies right now. In fact, never mind that for a second. Yaha's going to be in trouble top lane. He is oh. still trying to deal damage to Januel. Getting the high ground advantage, but Fairy fires up. You have the Icarus knife there, but now the shard. Salve being used as well. Januel does go back, going back in. Now the Fairy fire tag team. Yaha will get the kill. Oh, so much regen used up. And RR down at the bot lane. Also going to go down here. As well as BHM on the Dazzle, losing his life. And uh, apparently the Weaver died, and now Yaha dies to the neutral creeps. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of topsy-turvy kills to go for. I think in the end, Neon's going to be happy because you waste a lot of the gold and a regen of that husk. So at least in that exchange between the Phoenix, yeah, you're happy enough to have him expend all of that. And John Yuel just heads back top. Should be able to get a decent enough time after refilling Yapage's bottle. So down mid, a lane that we just kind of glossed over. You know, you start, you are starting to see a pretty balanced start, although Yaha is in to try to refill the bottle as well. But as you mentioned, level 6 is the key timing here, but Ben-Hur is actually finding more than he did in game 1. That he is. Chase down Genuel on that Phoenix, getting the chains off as well. Genuel going to be there with the double damage though. So now oh. Avalanche toss in from Yopage and Ben-Hur stuck around way too long. Just underestimating the Avalanche toss combo from Yopage. Yeah, he really wanted that rune and got punished for it. Even BHM up top, left alone, yeah, it goes can't down. sustain against the damage. It's way too hard to get up against the Weaver now. Like, he's at that level 4 mark with level 2 Sakuchi. Now, the Swarm removing so much of his armor throughout that chase it makes it way too difficult for him to survive. This is that point now where Neon might really start to escalate as those levels have gone up. The Raging Bot Lane has fallen very, very low on the Beastmaster, but he does bring out a Sal for himself and will be okay. And I guess that's the one good thing going on for Execration is Palos is farming decently. Yeah, he's been given some space, although we did sort of see this last game. Uh, he was still kind of up there in terms of last hits. So, as long as Execration maintains that for Palace, I think there is an opportunity there to grow. They have to be very careful about, you know, getting RR out of this lane. You really don't want to abandon the Jaro. Just ensure that good start for one of your heroes, and that will give you an opportunity to build up on them later on. Yupa is going to be very disruptive here up against Ben-Hur. Not letting him get those neutral stacks going for himself. Hits like a truck right now with that, huh? With the tree grab, and now Avalanche toss as well. Whoa! Wow. Well, okay, I, I didn't think it was just going to kill him like that. He has level 3 Flame Guard, but I was completely wrong. It does. Yeah, he waited for the perfect moment for it to disappear first. And ah. just gets the... Oh. Just gets the perfect time. Perfect kill. And what was a decent start for Ben-Hur just kind of turns around. Snowball up the top lane for Skem. BHM's still going to die, however. Skem can just time lapse, and he's going to keep chasing after Yaha now. Now, Januel will come in with Ooh. some Fire Spirits and the Icarus Dive, and Yaha is burning and will be dead, as the Sakuchi damage should be enough. Though, no, he doesn't hit him with the Sakuchi. Still juking around. Yaha actually making his way out of this. Now pops the tag team. He will die, but Skem going to be fairly low on the Weaver now. Will still survive and be okay. Meanwhile, bot lane, your Paj rotates on the tiny and does kill off RR. Yeah, you're starting to see that early aggression really kick up for Neon. Skem? Yeah, he takes out to the poison touch. So stuck <laughs> around a bit too long. Good punishment. Good amount of gold for BHM. Still, Neon lead by 1k, 5 to 10, 7 minutes in. They're finding that early momentum, but Execration's not too far behind, so... Again, you have to worry about the small victories Execration's finding in all raging. Yeah, he's in trouble. The cooldown is going to be there. Does he get out? Yapash, oh. he's around the corner. and well, That's going to be a lot of damage. 
That avalanche toss, it really does destroy anybody. Your Page now sitting at level 7, just going to keep roaming around the map. It's that point where the Tiny can literally just one combo kill you, and he's not even maxed out toss. Yeah, it's getting a bit scary for Execration. They just can't show up in lane. They're trying to apply pressure top. John Ewell? It should die here on the Phoenix. He doesn't have 6 yet, but Skem will be able to go after BHM, who does now have Shallow Grave, but I kind of doubt this Weaver is going to stop chasing. He has the time lapse, he can easily do it, and he doesn't even need the time lapse. Just takes out BHM once again. It's going to be the fourth death for the Dazzle. Meanwhile, bot lane. Raw being committed now. Your Pash still around. Oh. Avalanche toss again onto Palos. He just TP'd in. He will manage to survive thanks to the rotations out from Yaha on the task. But now seeing only one rotation, they go back in after that gyro. Raging will happily die, knowing that this gyrocopter will have to walk his way back to the lane. Your Paj, I don't think he's dead. He's just going to run away. Yeah, I'd say he could have turned, actually, and tried to go for that kill. Still, Execration, I mean, that was the one lane going well for them. Palace's lane. And with these early rotations, your Paj has kept that in check. So a nice lead for Neon. Still not the biggest. But you have hurt the heroes that really need to come online. Look at Palace's farm. He's at 2.5k. 1.2 behind that Weaver. Really not where you want to be on a Jaro. You're supposed to be out farming literally everyone. That's the point of this hero, but he's just not able to find that space. And then Palos is having a great old... Uh, well, he's not having a great old time, but he's just trying to catch up. He's way far behind now, but can just take these jungles, jungle camps like this. Not too difficult for Palos. Gyrocopter, though, compared to other carries, like, for example, the Weaver, does take a lot of farm to really be able to, to fight with this team. That's the problem. Hmm. So it's not quite as easy as, you know, just being able to fight at level 3 or 4 like the Weaver can. Skem. Yeah, uh... no, he's going to keep farming the jungle as well in this Weaver. It's a lot of stacks, and... Should allow him to build up quickly. Doesn't have what he wants queued up next just yet. But there's a lot of room to grow. Well, we see sometimes the SMI will go down bot. Oh, it's a great avalanche toss out from Yopage, but he is surrounded and he will go down. Now Raging does take the bounty rune, but is on the chase. No, in fact, Ben Hur got the bounty. Yeah, that's a big victory for Execration. Finding one of the bigger targets on the map. Taking out Yopage, that does give them a lot of room to breed. This is buying space for Neon, especially for the supports. You look at John Uel, he's got free space up top, should hit that level 6 mark with the book. So you're going to have to contend with that Phoenix Egg coming up very soon. Hell, he'll be level 7 in a minute. That's a scary thing to think about, that Phoenix Sunray damage really does melt you with the, fi with the, uh, the fire spirits as well. Execration. Just keep buying time for Palos. That is the idea. Palos, of course, going to be going for the first item, Aghanim Scepter, which we do see quite a lot from Gyrocopters. It's going to be a while off, but he's getting close enough to the point booster now. It's not too bad. Yeah. It's uh, just more time needed, and they have kept the jungle secure. They've invested more in the wards, although, you, you know, you, you got to ensure that pace is still there. You start to look towards, say, Ben Hur to apply aggression on the map. He does have his urn up going for the uh, spirit vessel, and it's log all over. <laughs> it's all right. The logs are over. Skem, <laughs> mid lane. Wants to take over and maybe just start pushing uh, pushing this tower in a little bit, but he will notice now Ben Hur is around on the ember. Interesting to note, Skem is trying to go for the Maelstrom build, which I wasn't quite expecting. Thought he may just go for the Deso Rush. Yeah, I think there is value in the magic damage here, just to deal with that gyro. Oh, oh no. they just blow him Yikes. up, Skem. It's quite fast when you get that Walrus Punch off with Tag Team, and well, Ben just commits some remnants. It's a nice kill out for Execration. 
That's what Neon have to be careful about with these calls, right? You can't give kills away like that. No, definitely not. And Execration, they're going to be very happy with that. That does give Ben-Hur a lot to play with. Accelerates his progress towards that Spirit Vessel. So he's just a Vit booster away. Not too bad considering well, the fairly even start he had down mid. And Neon, maybe take a step back. Wait for the blink on your posh, but they do just smoke up. They want to keep going. That they will. Down to that bot lane, they saw Ben Hur. They have the roar on Raging Potato. Raging just trying to bait out right now. Ben. No, they switched targets. They've Ooh. gone on to RR instead, so that Enchantress will go down first. Ben gonna remnant back into the mid lane now. They are still around the area, Neil. They could try to make a, a break here onto Ben. Yopage will show himself, but he can't really break the distance. So instead, it's back into that mid-T1 tower. Avalanche Toss is going to come out eventually from Ben as he did come back in. Now the chains to fly out, and he will eventually just have to remnant. However, they're going. Skem, chase him down. Goes past him, in fact. Just avoids the Ember altogether. Yeah, that's an uh, interesting movement, and oh no. John Yuel. Does end up dying on the Phoenix. Yaha again on the uh, the task, making it happen. Yeah, he is setting the pace, starting to find some key pickoffs, and it's that early level advantage that the Tusk can bring out. The damage he pumps out at this point is pretty ridiculous. So you look to Yaha to keep setting up those plays. Still Neon, not the turd. They keep on pushing. Neon oh. waiting for Yaha to go up the cliff, and yeah, he's probably dead. Morris punch there from Playhard as well. Still, he's not quite dead. Snowball going to be out, chasing down this Rubik. Now, Palos going to be there to help. Snowball as well. Yaha does die. Do you have Ben Hur rotating in from the sidelines on the Ember? Meanwhile, BHM getting almost taken down there by the Weaver, being burnt out. Yapage with the toss does get the kill. And now RR will also be chased down and does also die. A lot of damage coming out from Ben Hur, but now the roar from Raging, he doesn't mess around. He just wants to kill off this Ember Spirit straight away. He didn't have any remnants out. He will commit one, but it may not be good enough. He does get chased and does get killed off as Palos almost dies as well. The Sunray and Skem will be enough. Skem on a triple now as Yaha still running away, but it's not going to be good. He is surrounded. It will be an ultra kill coming out for Skem. And RR is just going to sit in the fountain for a bit and act like nothing ever happened. He will eventually just TP down bot. Yeah, it's a, a lot of big kills now for Neon. They bounce back. They pull massively ahead from those kills. 4k advantage now onto Neon. And you do not want to toss Palos in like that. He is not ready. And they might find R again. No, you don't have your pods around. So, Execration, they've got to pick their fights. They can't just go all in on the triangle like that. You still need farm on Palos. He's not ready on his gyrocopter. And every single time he dies, that delays his timing even further. They go back up to that top lane execration. They are still yet to push down that top T1. Well, it looks like the side of Neon aren't going to bother trying to defend. Instead, they're going to try and push the, push the bottom tier too. Ben-Hur is going to be there to defend on the Ember. Raging has the roar up. Play hard. May go for the lift here onto Ben. Does end up stealing the slider fist. And eventually Ben is still sticking around. Raging not willing to roar yet. They need the lift first. Raging going to try and go. No, they go for the avalanche toss first, but he will remnant out. Raging just couldn't break the uh, the gap in time. And There's going to be a lot of free time here now for Execration. Do you see the, uh, the gyro Palos just farming up that dire jungle? And is about 400 gold away from having the full 
Aghanim Scepter up. However, mid lane, they have started the team fight. Yaha will die. Now time lapse out from Skem, just trying to regen that, that health and well, lift up onto the Ember with the chains and Sunray. He wore him out of there. Yep, raging, still wants a raw target. Oh, Yapage, oh. great avalanche toss, Ben Hur. Still surviving through it. Now the cooldown is out from Palos. They roar up the gyrocopter immediately, wanting to try and take him down. Skem, who are you going for? He'll go after the Enchantress, but now the Sunray is out onto that gyro. It is a lot of damage, but the Shallow Grave will keep him protected for now. Fire Spirit's flying out. Palos still alive, but Skem is cutting him off and will take him out. Now goes after the back lines. BHM just trying to run away. Skem. Oh, this should add a bit more damage to Yaha. No, Ooh. never mind. Your Page is there. An avalanche toss. They're going to get cleaned up. They'll lose Skem. It's another triple out. I mean, they lose BHM. Oh. An ultra kill once again for Skem. One more. And the one, one last one. The Ember, Ben Hur. Rampage oh. will come out for Skem. A great way to end that team fight. Another In fact, one. Yaha might give him another Rampage. He's trying to run away, but Skem's going to get it. A second oh, Rampage God. out. Whew. Oh boy. That's one way to do it. Oh, scam. There's just no way to control the guy. This was an issue from the draft. They only have the tusk. I guess there's the missile, but that's not enough. And scam just running away, really cleaning up. They skipped out in the tier twos to get that done. They only really lose your Paj, but who cares? He's done his job. Neon now with a 9k advantage, really shutting Execration in. Execration? Man, you guys have got to finish that farm in Palos. The Ags is great, but that's not going to be enough by itself. A lot more has to fly out on the Gyro before things can really kick into gear. It's going to be a while. Now, Palos was so close to that Aghanim Scepter just a couple minutes ago. Still hasn't got it. He's uh, got it now. It's on the courier. Just keep farming up. Will sign of execration. Neon Esports looking to try and make the push happen down a bot lane. Bottom tower is under attack. Raging Potato yeah. can just slowly chip away at this by himself. Yeah, he's got, he's got the max boars now. So it can do decent damage and just slow push down Baki, do you see a clump up top? There is a lot of execration here, so they've got their sights on Skem. Rotating in, the smoke will break. Ben Hur does break it, now gets the chains off. However, they oh, just no. want Palos, and Palos has no way to escape this. Yopaz jumps in and tosses him back, and now, well, Palos, they don't even need to, need to roar him up. They will roar up oh. BHM instead. Now the Dazzle's gonna die as well, and RR is just trying to run. There's that Sunray from Januel again. While well, Axe is connecting as well. Scam gonna be with the follow up on the Weaver. Be a very, very easy pick off for Neon Esports. And this game is getting out of hand now, John. 10k net worth lead Ooh. for Neon. Not good yeah, news. Definitely not good news for Execration. 10k advantage. 12 to 31 at 20 minutes in. It's a lot for Execration to have to try to dig through and... Avalanche. Oh, Toss man. gonna be out onto Ben. He should be... Oh, he didn't have any remnants out. Gonna do it the old-fashioned way. Yaha will be around just in case, but they are breaking the gap now. Skem trying to get in within range to that Ember. He will run it out with the chains as well. Now back in onto Yaha. A big avalanche toss again oh. from Yopage. Skem is godlike right now. Diving the T3 towers once again. He doesn't have time lapse though. He can't afford to die. Oh. The Phoenix Sunray will keep him alive. He goes back in now. The what? toss back out onto Skem. He does find another triple kill. Oh, they're just dancing around them. It's a clinic, John. It is. They can't squash the bug. They just can't squash the bug. And execration. 4K, 14K behind now. I mean, Neon just dip into the Roche. Why not? They're so far ahead. They can just take it. Absolutely. This is that point where you start asking yourself... Has the draft just fallen a bit flat for Execration? Is it... Is this it? 
That gyro, I mean, just an Aghanim scepter. It's a very, very it's sad gyrocopter. Is, and it's saving up for a BKB next. Like, yeah, you can stand there and fight. The damage is not great. It's just not enough from our gyro. And I can get why you build this way. It's just, there needs to be a lot more. Ben-Hur has been stalled out since the Spirit Vessel has been trying to finish the Blade Mail. Hasn't had any progress. And he's out of Spirit Vessel charges. So you don't have that great active up because you haven't found kills. Oh, that's terrible. Raging has raw. Ben. Oh, Ben. Oh, Mace of... No, he won't. No, he will not. And uh, well now the Avalanche is there onto BHM. They're just going to dive tier threes again. Skim has the time lapse and the Aegis. BHM may just be dead. He will shallow grave and they do get the Aegis. Skim looking to maybe get out. No, he wants to keep going. He'll just fight them. <laughs> Eventually we'll leave. Yeah, it's, uh, the Aegis gone. So Execration, they find something in exchange, but... Looks like they will have to give out their last outer tower here. Still not dissuaded. They smoke up. They want his turn. This could be the final team fight as they're getting a bit desperate here. Avalanche toss gonna be out. Now the egg as well being dropped. Yaha keeps going. Misses the walrus punch though. He does end up dying and now they keep going for more. Palos, does he get out? He does. He makes the TP in time. Skem gonna chase down RR. The Enchantress really not that big of a deal and Raging gets in there with the Wild Axes, does secure the kill. Nice toss in once again by Yopage. Now Skem just going after Ben-Hur. The Sunray keeping him healed up throughout the whole thing. Yopage again looking for another toss, does get it onto Palos. He gets lifted up, he has no way to survive. The Shallow Grave will delay things, but ultimately I believe he is just still going to die though. No, the mech comes out as well. Skem will take care of the Dazzle. Now time lapsing oh. just before he dies himself. Oh, it's just getting worse and worse. They're onto the tier threes now. They have a 20k advantage. Dota Plus has given up on Execration now. A <laughs> 100% oh, chance for Neon that. Esports. Yeah, it's uh, it's tricky. They respawn really quick, so they are throwing bodies at the problem, but man, it's it's just not shaping up. Avalanche, oh, RR. Uh, yeah, he's dead. Now the roar comes out on Ben Hur. Skem gonna rotate around, and Ben, he does get the remnant off in time. Almost dies regardless. That'll be the mid racks going down 24 minutes in. They may just want to reset here onto Neon, and that's exactly what they'll do. In fact, they're going up to that top tier too, I believe, because it is still standing. Yeah, it's, uh, they were fighting over bounties as well. Yopage wanted that bounty for his bottle. Not giving it the scam for his own bottle, so... Oh, oh they're yeah. going in again. Call down is there. Into the egg, though. Can they at least get the egg down? They can. That's a good start. Now the walrus punch. They are almost taking down Yopage. He's still trying to play around with them here with the great avalanche. Oh. Scam is still a huge problem, though. He's cleaning him up again. Ben Hur's going to make a run for it. He's got no remnants left. Sakuchi will be there. The chase continues. They they have full vision on him, but they can't save the Ember. Now oh, play hard with play the Shallow hard. Grave. Going to buy him more time. Skem with another ultra kill, and now it might be the third Rampage oh of the game. God. Oh, he just keeps going. They've just called GG. They just disconnect. Oh. They've had enough. He has the Divine oh. Rapier up now. He, he just went and bought it. Yeah, what a way to end. Neon. The dominance coming out, forcing a big quit from Execration, and what a way to end the day, Mike. What a way to end Independence Day with a massive boom. Neon with three rampages coming out. Just outstanding plays from them. That definitely was, John. Of course, that is actually it for us uh, for tonight and for the next few days. Uh, we're going to be back on the 15th and I believe the 18th, John. And mm. that'll be it for our BTS Pro Series 2 uh, casting. So, uh, it's been fun. I think the, the viewers have yeah. been quite nice, I've got to say. Everyone's been very, very positive in the chat. Uh, John, you got yeah. any final words before we head off for the night? 
you know, hopefully everyone's had fun for the past eight days. That's a, that was a lot of games, Mike. Eight days, four best of twos. So that's two games each. That was a lot, but that was massive fun for us. If you did, if you guys did enjoy, you know, me and Mike, we're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. John X Far for me. MLP Dota for Mike, which is Mike LaPhoenix, of course. Just to clarify, guys, Thank it's not my time. little pony. Thank so you. go ahead, follow us, Twitter, Facebook. Come back for more games. There are a lot more games to come. We are closing out in groups. There will be different casters to listen to. And, you know, just hit us up on Twitter and we'll see you guys next time. Well, thanks for tuning in. It's been an absolute pleasure. We'll see you guys in a few days.